Um, so as promised, uh, I'm going to be going through exercise 5.6 with you guys. Let's see if we just get there. And then once we're done with 5.6, we're going to revise your question, your question uh, paper, your test, in other words, your test. Okay, um, you're going to see, do, 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 do. Um, you're going to see how we handle the um, reconciliation statement. Um, that's really the focus of what we're, why we're having this lecture today, because, you know, a lot of us struggled with, uh, with the test, that third question. Um, um, so we just want to make sure that if we do come across it in the exam, that we smash it out the park. Okay, so awesome. So please uh, turn with me to your question 5.6. And again, if you have any questions as we go along, please just switch on your mic and then let us engage. Or you'll try and you can try post in the chat. But as always, I tend not to pick up on that. Um, so it's a lot easier if you guys actually just switch on your mic and share whatever you have to share. Okay, so let's quickly see what's happening there in the required. Okay, it says, under the required, prepare the basic general ledger reconciliation statement for uh, Mapu Lang dealers as at 31 May 2009. Okay, so the general reconciliation statement um just to give you a brief overview we know that at the end of the bookkeeping cycle we do the trial balance okay but what happens when our trial balance does not balance so we finish our trial balance and here at the bottom can you see our debit does not equal our credit okay so now we have to do a, a general ledger reconciliation statement because what that means, if our debit does not equal our credit, is that somewhere along in our general ledger, there's either errors, omissions, or we've overstated some of the transactions. So we need to investigate to see where did we make those errors, and then we need to try and rectify those errors right there. Okay? So that's what we're doing in this process. Okay? So then it says the following errors and omissions were depicted okay cool before we go there let's see what they're saying in the top of the question the following incorrect trial balance appeared in the books okay on 31 may the business makes use of the manual bookkeeping system is a registered bad vendor and deals only with other registered bad vendors a standard vat rate of 15% applies. Okay, cool. No problems. All right, now we can get into it. Okay, so here we now, uh, the first transaction, it says drawings by the owner amounting to 1,700 was recorded as follows. Okay, so drawings took place, and here you can see this is the cost excluding that. Okay, we know that we record drawings on the cost inclusive of that. But look how we recorded it. It says, recorded as follows, cost of sales, 1,700, and then trading inventory, 1,700. Okay, right. So somebody tell me what's wrong with how we recorded it. Somebody tell me there in the chat. What's wrong with how we recorded it? Anybody want to give it a go? I'll give you a hint. Firstly, we should not be using cost of sales for this. We should not be using cost of sales. Okay, people are silent. No feedback. Okay. Well, it's okay. I understand. Uh, it's been a long semester, so I will, I will, I will allow you guys. I will allow. Okay. So. First problem here is that cost of sales was never supposed to be involved. So the first thing we need to do is we then need to credit cost of sales to remove this 1,700 debit. So we go to cost of sales, 
let's scroll down and look for cost of sales. We know it's in the nominal account section. There we have our cost of sales. Can you see now? So in the column of recommended adjustments, what we then do is we credit cost of sales. Credit it by 1,700, okay? Then we've rectified that. But now also the other thing is we need to uh, go to drawings and we know that we need to then debit drawings because trading inventory being credited 1,700, that's correct. And at the VAT exclusive amount, okay, no problems there, okay. Um, so then we say, okay, where is drawings? Drawings again is in your balance sheet section and we're debiting there, but we're not debiting for 1,700. As we said, we need to do it at, um, at the, uh, that's not the one. See if maybe I can do this. Let's do this. Yeah, there we go. So we're saying 1,700, all right, and then times the uh, 1,515 divided by 100, because that's the bad exclusive. That should then give you 1,950. So that's the amount that we want to include over there. Okay. Where are we? We want to go to drawings. Drawings where are we? So we're debiting that amount right there for 1950 1,900. Okay, awesome stuff. Mm -hmm. I just closed my book by accident, quickly flipping back. Um, and then the next thing that we need to do, because can you see the other bit is that, that can you see that no uh, output that was recorded? Because remember, initially we said when we bought these goods, this trading inventory, we said that, hey, um, we are claiming input VAT on this stuff. But now since uh, these goods have been taken by the owner, that means that input VAT, we need to reverse the input VAT. All right. Already we know the VAT amount on these goods because 1,700 minus 1,955, you get 255. So to reverse that input VAT, we need to do an output VAT. Can you see we don't have a VAT output and a VAT input here? So what we then do is we use the VAT control. VAT control is basically a summary of your VAT, your input VAT and your output VAT. So here, a credit 255, okay? Awesome stuff. Right, and now we're done with this first correction. We move on to the next one. It says refreshments were bought for 230 from petty cash. But input VAT was erroneously claimed on the purchase. Then transaction was also recorded in the cash payments journal instead of the petty cash journal. Okay, right. So problem here that we have is we have refreshments. Refreshments firstly, we know is non-allowable because that's for staff, okay? So what we need to do is remove that input VAT. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Um, so to remove that input VAT, we then need to calculate what was the VAT portion on this. So we say, okay, cool, no problem. 230, right? 230 times 15. Divided by one one. Okay, you should get thirty rand over there. Okay, so we then go. We say, okay, we're removing input that again. So here, we're going to then have to say thirty credit, because we remove input that by doing an output that. Okay, right. So that's the first thing we've corrected the that uh, error. Then we say then. 
transaction was recorded in the cash payment journal instead of the petty cash journal. Okay, so what that tells you is the cash payment journal affects the bank account. Okay, so that means what we need to do is we need to increase the bank because cash payments is a credit in the bank. So here we need to then debit the bank. All right, debit the bank by 230. Okay. And uh, remember, we're using the whole 230 because there's no input that that can be claimed on this. Okay. And then what we need to do is we then need to go to the petty cash journal. Okay. And in the petty cash journal, we then now need to remove this 230 because remember it was not recorded. Okay, so we go to the petty cash journal and we put that 230 as a credit. Okay, right. So here, if your dead click is not in order, if you don't know your dead click, right, is this increasing or is this decreasing this account? You're going to see flames because you have to know, okay, this transaction, how is it impacting this particular? Uh, account okay how is it impacting this particular account okay all right so that's done i don't know if there are any questions so far let me see okay nope everyone is quiet okay no problems let's proceed then then the third transaction says the owner made a capital contribution in the form of a personal check 6,000 drawn in favor of the business, but this transaction has not been recorded as yet. Okay, that's simple. Okay, that capital contribution is obviously going to increase the bank account. Okay, so here we're going to say 6,000 on the debit because we know that the bank increases on the debit side. Then we're going to go to capital and we know capital increases on the credit side. So here we're going to say 6,000. Okay. And we're dealt with that one. Then we move on to the next one. It says the stationary column in the petty cash journal was undercast by 720 and posted as such. So the stationary all right, column was undercast. When we hear the words undercast, what does it mean? Okay. Undercast means that it is less than what it should be. Okay. So if that stationary column, remember we post the total on the column to the general ledger. So if that is short by 720, that means that our stationary expense, let's go down to stationary, is less than what it should be. Okay. So then what we then need to do is we need to debit stationary by 720 to increase its balance increase the expense okay and we're done there nothing else that needs to happen remember it's saying the stationary column all right so in other words that amount there at the bottom okay was undercast was short so we probably didn't add things correctly there. okay happiness that's number four then number five it says a new computer purchased for four thousand five hundred plus that Okay, I think I heard something in the chat. So let me. Sir, it does not affect the petty cash amount. Sir, yes, you're 100% right. Shenrika, you're 100% right. It does not. I know it gets a bit confusing. Um, but whenever they say the column, you know that it's about that balance right there at the bottom. So it, it's only affecting that specific account, in this case, stationary, and not. Um, so typically when you hear that, and it's so good that you asked the question, so it's showing me that you're obviously with me, is that it's showing that that amount there, that total in that column at the very bottom, just the total was not what it was supposed to be, but they're not obviously saying there was an error within each transaction. So the transactions were recorded correctly. We can assume that, but it's just the total that was not recorded correctly. Okay. So in other words, the amount actually did go off the petty cash, but it just didn't, we just did not get the total right. 
and therefore we also posted it to the stationary account in error as well yeah okay all right awesome stuff thank you thank you all right all right all right so we've recorded that let's move on to the fifth transaction a new computer purchased for 4500 plus that okay so in other words that's that exclusive can you see they said plus that was erroneously recorded in repairs and maintenance account oh goodness me no that was claimed on the transaction so if they tell you no that was claimed on the transaction that means that we also need to do the necessary vat uh record the necessary vat uh transaction so first things first what we want to do is rectify the fact that this was recorded in repairs and maintenance all right so in order to do that if it was recorded in repairs and maintenance that means it was debited in repairs and maintenance so let's go down to repairs and maintenance where is repairs and maintenance we know it's in the nominal account section there we go so it was debited so to remove that we need to credit it by 4500 okay we would have used 4500 because we know that is the that exclusive amount that we are obviously working we're going to be working yeah let's see was erroneously recorded da, 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 da. okay no that was claimed on the transaction okay oh i actually made a bit of a blunder there so actually we then should be actually uh, recording the VAT inclusive since no VAT was actually claimed. So there you say 4,500 and then times 115 divided by 100. Okay, let's see what that actually amounts to before we remove that. Someone has the answer. So, so, so when you, when we adjust we use the that exclusive it depends it depends so if you're looking at in this particular circumstance i actually am in error so let's just quickly calculate the that inclusive and then i'll explain exactly why i'm saying that okay times four thousand okay so that's the amount we are looking for Right, cookie, and then let's paste. Okay. Now let me explain to answer your question. Can you see uh, what they said there in the question? They said no VAT was claimed. So in other words, they just used the the total amount there. They didn't claim input VAT. Okay. So since no input VAT was claimed, that means that they used the total amount inclusive of VAT all right in repairs and maintenance so we credit it by 5175 okay however uh, when we go now to the other account where this should have been recorded if you look in your um in your uh what do you what do they call this in this uh general ledger reconciliation statement you don't have a computer account so we have to use furniture and equipment all right now we know that we can claim input that on on a uh, computer so therefore we then know that we're going to be debiting the that exclusive amount of 4500 okay and then what we also know is that we then now need to also record the VAT because they didn't say VAT was correctly recorded. If they had said VAT was correctly recorded, then we know that we don't need to worry about that. So here now we know it's input VAT. So your input VAT, if I need to do the calculation again, uh, let me do it where we started. So we're going to say 5,175 minus 4,000, 4,500 gives us what? Okay, that's 500, so this would be 675. Okay. So that's the VAT amount on this transaction. So we go to the VAT control. That's how much we're going to claim input VAT. 
Where is the red control? Yeah, I passed it. So six, seven, five. Input there. I hope I'm answering your question. Does that make sense? TK, do you now understand? It depends on how they set this, the question. Okay, all right, perfect. Happiness. Happiness. So that was transaction number five. Then we go to transaction number six. Machinery purchased for 11,400, including that, okay, was recorded as a purchase of trading inventory, okay? The input that was correctly claimed on the purchase. Oh, when you see this, you should be very happy because it means we don't need to worry about that in terms of correcting the VAT. We only need to worry about how this transaction was recorded in error. Okay, so what is the problem here? We recorded something that was supposed to be recorded in machinery in trading inventory. Okay. So first things first, we need to now go to the machinery, oh, sorry, uh, the trading inventory account and remove this, okay, uh, amount that was recorded in the trading inventory. But remember, again, they told us input that was claimed correctly. So that means that what was recorded in the trading inventory account was the amount exclusive of that. So let's calculate what was actually debited uh, in the trading inventory account. So we're saying 11,400, 11, that's the VAT ex inclusive, times, you want the VAT exclusive, so 100 divided by 1115, okay? And what does that give us? Let's quickly calculate that to zero. So 100 divided by 115. Times 400. Boom. And there we go. That's what we get. So that's what we debited on trading inventory initially. So now to correct that debit, we need to credit that amount so as to remove that error. Okay, now that we've done that, we can now go to the machinery account and debit this because this is where it was supposed to be recorded in the first place. Again, if your dead click is not in order, you are going to see flames because basically you're asking yourself, do I increase or decrease machinery? Do I increase or decrease trading inventory? And you know, the moment we say, do I increase or decrease, we are asking, am I debiting or crediting this account? Okay, depending on the nature of the account. Okay, All right. So that's done. Remember they said, the input VAT was correctly claimed on the purchase, so we don't need to worry about that. Then, okay, just let me check if there are any questions. Okay, cool. So far, so good. Then the last one there, it says the outstanding debt of a debtor must be written off as irrecoverable. 684. Input VAT may be claimed back from SARS on this credit loop. Okay, they didn't need to tell you that. Okay. So what they're basically telling you is we need to write off. We haven't done it. Okay. So what we then do is whenever we have credit losses, we need to ask ourselves this question. Whenever we have credit losses, which accounts are affected? We know the debtors, just do this, debtors control is affected because this was person obviously owed us we know that credit losses the expense account is going to be affected okay although uh, some of you may call it bad debt same thing and then lastly remember when we first sold to this guy we claimed output then okay Output that. But now, in order to reverse that, because we're saying SARS, we actually didn't sell. We didn't actually make that sell. We then now need to do an input that to reverse the output that. 
Okay, so these are the accounts that are affected. Okay, so then we say to ourselves, we know the debtor's control is going to be the amount inclusive of that. Okay, so we can use this 684. Okay, so we go to the debtor's control. Where are you? Okay, our debtor's control is getting reduced. So we know debtor's control decreases on the credit side. So 684 there. Then we say to ourselves, hmm, okay, so we've done that, but we know that there's a portion of input that, that we need to record, because remember we're reversing that output that, so we're going to debit the VAT control, so let me calculate it here since it's nearby, so we're saying 684 times 15 divided by 115, because that's that. And what do we get? And let's get our calculators. So 15 divided by 115 equals times your 684. What do we get? Okay, we get this 89.22. I'll copy that and add two. Okay, and that we're going to debit on the VAT control. Because this is input VAT. They say round to the nearest rand. No, they didn't say that here. Okay, so cool. You can leave that as is. Then, so we've recorded the input VAT bit. The last bit that we now need to do is record the credit losses or bad debts. We know that this is going to be your 684 minus the 89.22, okay, which gives us what? Okay, I'll calculate it one last time. Minus 684. And there you go. Okay. We don't need that negative. Right, and that's going to affect credit losses. Credit losses. Where are you? There we go. All right, we know this is an expense, so we're debiting this amount. Okay. All right. Now, now that you've done all the amendments, all right, necessary, now your next job is to then balance each of these to get the correct trial balance. Uh, amount okay so I'm just going to show you one or two of them and then we're going to we're going to I'll show you the answers so here you can see this was the old incorrect balance for capital we add 6,000 to 377,080 rand all right can you see it has a credit balance the adjustment was a credit so that means that we're going to add those two amounts together okay and that let's just do it mentally this should give you 300, oh, sorry, 383, okay, 80. That's your new capital balance. We go to drawings. Mm, let me not use drawings as an example because it's the same. Can you see there's a debit balance there and your adjustment was a debit. So you're going to add those two together. Debit balance on machinery, debit balance adjustment. You're going to add those together. I want a situation where we have a debit balance, like here, trading inventory, but a credit adjustment. Can you see? Now this debit balance is greater than the credit adjustment, so we're going to still have a debit balance, but it's going to decrease. We have to minus, okay, so 40,000. Okay, I'm not even going to try to do that mentally. Let's just calculate that, get it right. So 40,000 minus... 99.3.04. What do we get? We get so this is now the new debit balance for trading inventory. And that's all that you're doing. That's all that you're doing throughout after having made your adjustments. Then once you've done that, all right, then you add up your debit and your credit. You should then arrive at a place where your debit, you can see I've done it in gray here, but let's do it in a nice brighter color. Your debit is then supposed to equal your credit, okay? Then you know that everything is in order. 
Okay, so let me quickly show you guys the answers. There we go. So there you can see, can you see how we've adjusted all of the balances now to arrive at the right place? And then can you see these accounts like sales, there was no adjustment. So the balance remained the same. Cost of sales, okay, we adjust that accordingly. All right, insurance, no adjustment. So same balance, same balance, same balance. And there you have your answer. Okay, and there you can see the total of the adjustments um, on the debit and on the credit side. Okay, right. So that's your uh, general ledger reconciliation statement. Okay, All right, awesome stuff. So guys, I think uh, the next order of business. Okay, let's just do question one and then I'm gonna give you guys a break. Question one is just theory. Question one is just theory, and then when you get back, we're gonna run through, run through. Uh, we're gonna run through the, run through these structured questions. Uh, okay. All right. I'm, de I'm debating. Do you guys want me to go through this theory with you? You know, I don't usually go through theory when it comes to this because you guys can just flip open your textbook and check. But if you guys want me to do it, don't mind doing it. So give me a thumbs up if you want me to go through the theory. And a thumbs down if you don't. Okay, I think it's a bit tricky because you guys don't have the actual question paper with you guys. I'm just going off of a extract that I made from looking at your past paper. So I'm going to have to read it to you if you go through this. Um, do you guys want me to go through the theory with you? Or do you want me to just go through just go through the structured question for your test? Thumbs up for a yes, and a thumbs down for a no. I got one vote, two votes, three votes. Okay, four votes. Okay, looking like a unanimous decision right now, which is no problem. So then let's get into that theory real quick, and then I'll give you guys a quick break, and then we'll go to shot. Okay, so there's only 10 questions, multiple choice questions at that. So first question that they asked there in question one, they said, in which of the journals listed below should the following transactions be recorded? All right. Credit purchase of any product or service. Okay. Guys, you shouldn't have needed to actually have a look at the others. You should have already known what you're looking for there. But they gave us the cash receipts journal, they gave us the creditors journal, they gave us the debtors allowance journal, and they gave us the debtors journal, the petty cash journal. Immediately you should have known credit purchases of any product or service are recorded in the creditors journal. Okay, right, cool. Next one, they said, which one of the following source documents will be used to make any, sorry, to make an entry in the debtors journal okay what source document do we use to record a transaction in the debtors journal here you need to ask yourself what is the debtors journal all about whenever we sell something to a customer on credit so what type of source document do we do we have when we sell to someone on credit okay since we are the supplier it's going to be a duplicate okay so there you are having a duplicate credit invoice, okay, as your source document. Um, that's your correct answer. And yeah, I see they also gave you petty cash voucher. They gave you duplicate credit note. 
they gave you original credit note, they gave you original credit invoice. All right. Okay, cool. But again, the answer is duplicate credit invoice. Right. Third, which of the following transactions does not uh, cause an increase in the bank account? Which of the following transactions does not cause an increase in the bank account? Okay. The business receives money from customers for cash sales. That's going to increase the bank. The business receives payment from debtors settling their account. That's going to increase the bank. The business receives rental income from a tenant. That's also going to increase the bank. The business pays a supplier for goods purchased. That's going to decrease the bank. Okay, So that's your right answer. Then the final uh, option that they gave, the business receives interest on bank account balance. That's also going to increase the bank. So the correct answer for number three was number four. Okay. okay. Then we go to... Question number four. Number four. In the general ledger, the details column is used for which of the following details? In the general ledger, what do we use the details column for? Okay. Right. So I'm just going to give you the correct answer. It was number three, and it was the name of a contra account where applicable. Okay, the other options they gave. So that was the correct answer. Name of contra account where applicable. The other options they gave was name of a debtor, name of a creditor, name of the owner, none of the above. Okay, right. Question number five. Purchases are classified as, okay, that you should have already known. They're classified as expenses. All right, that was your correct answer and that was number two. Number two is your correct answer. Um, the other answers which were incorrect were income, liabilities, assets, none of the above. Okay. Number six. Assuming ABC trading uses a periodic inventory system, cost of sales would be determined as follows. Okay. So here they were basically just asking you for your cost of sales formula. How do we get the cost of sales? Okay, we know that cost of sales is opening inventory plus your purchases, what we purchase, okay? Then uh, plus your associated uh, inventory costs and then minus your closing trading inventory or your closing inventory, okay? Now, uh, the correct answer was number one, okay? And if you look, the actual breakdown for number one was opening inventory plus your purchases, okay? And if there was also, then you could say minus uh, purchases returns, but in the answer, they didn't have that. Okay, it was just opening inventory per plus purchases plus carriage on purchases plus import tariffs and then minus closing inventory or closing trading inventory, okay? The rest were wrong. Okay, so that was number one. Number six. The correct answer was number one. Okay, then let's move on to number seven. Number seven, it says, use the following information. Calculate the cost of sales amount. Okay, so we had sales 150,000. Okay, let me actually, I'm just going to say, oh, how should we do this? Sales was 150. Then we had what else? We had opening inventory that was twenty thousand, and then we had purchases. Okay, and that was how much? Hundred thousand. Okay, and then we had transport costs from the supplier. Okay, so I was just going to call that transport. Okay, and that was how much? 5,000. 
correct that. Okay, then the last thing that we had was, oh, no, not the last thing, storage cost before the items are sold. So, storage. That was how much? That was also 5,000. Okay, and then the last one we had closing inventory. Okay, and that was 30. Awesome. So I'm just throwing that in there so you guys have it um, as we discuss the question. Okay. All right. So now they're saying use the following information, calculate cost of sales. Okay. So sales we are obviously not going to use. We're not going to bother with sales. Okay. Then uh, opening inventory. Yes, we're going to use that. Purchases. Yes, we're going to use that. Transport. Yes, we're going to use that. Storage, we're not going to use that. And then closing inventory. Okay. All right. Use the following calculate cost of sales. Okay. So now I'm trying to see. What was the question here? Use the information, calculate cost of sales. Oh, so they wanted uh, us to calculate the cost of sales. So uh to calculate your cost of sales okay so twenty thousand plus a hundred thousand hundred and twenty thousand then plus this five thousand that's hundred and twenty five thousand then minus thirty thousand so that would give you ninety five thousand okay that's your answer for cost of sales okay now if you look at the options that they gave number one 155,000. that's wrong Next one, 100,000, that's wrong. 90,000, that's wrong. And number four, they gave 120,000, which was also wrong. So your correct answer was none of the above. Yeah. So that's number five for number seven. Cool. Then number eight, a credit purchase of inventory will be recorded as follows using the perpetual inventory system. Credit purchase of trading inventory. Okay, so think about it. We know we purchased something on credit, so credit is control is going to be affected. How are we going to? Are we going to credit or debit? Uh, uh, what's this? Credit control. Credit is control. Somebody post there in the chat. Then the next question is, what other account is affected? All right, we were buying inventory, and we are on the perpetual inventory system. So trading inventory is the other account that's going to be affected. So somebody tell me, are we going to debit or credit your trading inventory? Are we going to debit or credit your um, creditors control? We're on the perpetual inventory system. Somebody tell me there in the chat. And then here they did not say ignore that. But when I look at all the options they gave you, there was no um there was not, no consideration to 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 that whether it be output or input so yes the transaction is a credit purchase of inventory will be recorded as follows using the perpetual inventory system okay nobody is saying anything so yeah i'm just going to give it to you you're going to debit trading inventory okay and then you're going to credit because remember trading inventory is increasing okay and your creditors control our liabilities are also increasing so we're going to then credit our creditors control it's, it's a liability account okay right then number nine almost done guys almost done inventory initially be recorded or sorry inventory should initially be recorded at the following value okay already you should have the answer right they have selling price non-realizable value cost work in progress and then finally, none of the above. Okay. So 
So we've, we've spoken quite a bit about this. Your answer there is number three or number nine. It should be cost. Inventory should initially be recorded at the following value, at cost value. Okay. That's number nine. And then finally, for your question one, number 10, it says, if a perpetual inventory system is used, the owner takes trading inventory for his own use. The following journal entry will be recorded. Okay. So again, they're not paying any attention to that there. Your correct answer is number one. All right. And there you're going to debit drawings. Drawings. And you're going to credit credit trading inventory so trading inventory is going down so the owner is taking trading inventory out of the business right all right awesome guys so that was your that was your um your what is this question one when we get back we'll quickly do question two and question three um, and then we'll call it a day so let me give you 10 minutes uh, and then let's get back together at 11 33 and then we will finish up and call it a semester all right see you guys in 10 if there's any questions or thoughts that you have, just post them in the chat and then we will address those before we proceed.